Hello, this is Joe with Astrophoto.com. Today I've got a rant, a thanks, a review, and a quick unboxing. I wanted to say thank you everyone who commented on the Horsehead Nebula issue I was having. I did get that fixed. I'll toss that image up here in a bit. Um, I'm, I'm okay with it. I just need to revisit it next year when it's out so that I can get a lot more data on it. And I, I think that most of my problems will go away. But I wanted to say that I appreciate it very much, those who uh, had some comments. Um, also, I wanted to say that I just started Twitter a little while ago and uh, everybody's been so great and I just wanted to thank everyone. I've already got you know, a few hundred followers and my Instagram, I've got a bunch of followers and uh, I've just built up quite the community without even trying and uh, I'm enjoying it and I, and I wanted to tell everybody thank you. Thank you so much. I was never really a social media person before. I started astrophotography and making videos and uh, the same goes for my YouTube channel. I just wanted to tell everyone thank you so much. I'm, I'm closing in on a thousand subscribers and I never thought that I would get to a thousand subscribers. Not in my wildest dreams and uh, yeah, I'm not that far away now and it's yeah it's really humbling. So thank you. Thank you so much. I, I hope I can continue to make content that uh, you guys like and enjoy. So I'll tell you what, uh, I'm going to teleport out to the observatory and we'll take a look at the light panel that I wanted to show you. Um, it's just a quick review on this uh, light panel that I found on Amazon that actually works really well for taking flats. So I'll see you in a second. So real quick, I just wanted to show you this light panel that I got off of Amazon. It was only $35 and it, I really like the way it takes flats. Normally, uh, you're not supposed to use an LED light panel to take your flats because it won't uh, evenly distribute the light across the frame. Uh, however, I took a chance with this one and it seems to work really well. And it, so I just wanted to show it to you in case you need, you're in need of one. Um, it's a lot better than spending a hundred upwards to, for a, a specific light panel. Not saying it's the right way by far, but for me, I'd rather spend that money on filters or something else, especially if this works. And I haven't had any issues with it. So what you do is, is you slew to the Zenith in uh, the Flat Wizard and Nina or whatever program you're using. So here's the light panel. Uh, it's plenty big for um, think telescopes up to I would say eight inches should this should work with so it's pretty nice um, and it's really bright <laughs> you can see and you just hold your thumb on the power button and it'll dim and what I do is is I dim it all the way down for my uh, broadband filters my LRGB and after we're slewed I just put the t-shirt on. I've got a video on how to do calibration frames in Nina, if you want to check that out. So I'm not going to really get into detail. I just wanted to show you that um, it works really well. And for the narrowband filters, you could either um, just turn this up a little bit. Not much, just, just a hair. And that works great. Or you can um, just add extra time. You want to be careful when you add extra time to your flats because you don't want to get any dark current noise in there. And I still don't think you will. I also don't really cool my camera because I'm talking about exposures that are at the most maybe two second exposures. Uh, the narrowband filters might go up a little bit higher than that, but I don't. I haven't seen any effects that the dark current has, but if you are worried, you can go ahead and cool your camera because uh, it, it shouldn't really affect anything. And of course, if you're using a DSLR, you would, uh, you would be using bias frames as well as your flats, but there it is. It's, it's 
pretty nice. I'll put a link to the description below. If you have any questions, just uh, put them in the comments. So I don't normally do unboxings, but recently I've started a Twitter account and I've been on there and I've seen some of the coolest things. And one of the things was um, the Hubble Space Telescope. And I saw it and I thought, man, I gotta have this. This is so cool. I, I've gotta see what this looks like. So I got it and uh, this isn't exactly the telescope I was hoping to do the unboxing on, but I still think it's gonna be really cool. So let's check this out. Well, there is a lot of air pillows. I mean, a lot of air pillows. So while I was on there, I also saw a moon lander, and uh, so I decided to grab that as well. And, but that's not what I wanted to show you. So I'll just set that over there. And uh, here it is. It is the Space Shuttle Discovery and the Hubble Telescope. I have not touched a Lego in 40 years. So this is going to be quite the, quite the project. Let's see what we got here. This is much larger than I was expecting it to be. All right, so I got another box inside of a box. pretty big. I'm impressed. I'm impressed with the packaging so far. I'm starting to get nervous though about having the time to actually put this together. There's a lot of pieces here. A lot of pieces. Let's see. If anyone else is thinking about something like this, I would probably, and, you ha and you're like me and you haven't touched a Lego in 40 years plus, uh, you might know, want to think twice about it. Uh, there's a book and seems to be a lot of stickers. Now oh, it's got the Space Shuttle logo on it. Cool, there you go. I'll uh, leave me a comment if you want to see it built later. Hey, I could do a time lapse. I don't know. Uh, I think I'm in for more than I bargained for here, to be honest with you. Well, let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs> oh, boy.